our slogan was Chesterfield, a city whose time has come. Deerberg's wanted the corner at River Valley Drive and Olive. And we just pretty much all came unglued and said we just can't have it. They didn't want so much commercial development. Send us a letter saying come to a meeting, we want to talk about incorporating Chesterfield. That was the first time we all kind of came together as a group. We went out and we, you have to get a certain number of signatures. Saturdays were spent going door to door. Jack Leonard, this was his idea. He kept us together. We met around his dining room table every Saturday. I recruited the volunteers and I organized everybody to be at the polls, to sign the petitions. In 1987, it was on the ballot. We almost made it. We uh, ended up losing by 600 and I think 62 votes. And then about a month later, we got together and we said, hey, we aren't gonna quit this thing. We said, look, we now know who would vote for it and who would vote against it. And we had a precinct map and it said, who voted yes and who voted no. And I took a big red magic marker and I, we'd go down the street line and we'd say, did they vote for us or did they vote against us? And it was like a subdivision. They voted against us, they're out. How about those people? They're for us, we're, we're there in. And we started gathering petitions and going around and having regular meetings. We had 64% of the votes. We did very well on the second time around. We were all sworn in on June the 1st, 1988. And so every bill, every ordinance had to be read in its entirety. 138 ordinances. We read every one of them three times. We started at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon and ended at 10.30 at night. We borrowed $2 million from Mark Twain Bank and we began to operate the city. We interviewed a guy named Mike Herring. The way he helped us set up the city is why it is what it is today. The chance to help shape something and, and create something where nothing exists, uh, you know, that was really unique and certainly of appeal to me and those that applied for the jobs of all of our department heads. We were sort of a gypsy city hall moving from place to place. Little bitty office. And I remember distinctly one day reaching and pulling out a drawer and the front of the drawer falling off my hand. And If something had to be done, there was nobody in the first three months to do it. Hired the chief, began to build the department, created our patrol routes, got all of our police cars, all of our uniforms, all of our, uh, the equipment that the uh, officers needed. We wanted to be a part of as uh, the city as opposed to a part from. Initially, um, it was rather quiet because we hadn't existed for all the years up until that moment. It was nicknamed Gumbo Flats and had a lot of other names, but once it became Chesterfield, it was just ready to, to boom. In 1993, for the people who worked and lived in these 4,500 acres, the thought of an emergency evacuation wasn't even on the radar screen. Thursday night, we got a call. Word came back via walkie-talkie that the levee had broken. The strain of holding back the swollen Missouri River, which was more than 19 feet above flood stage, finally took its toll on the Chesterfield Monarch Levee along Etherton Road. The levee, which was supposed to last 100 years, broke. The Army Corps of Engineers, they actually took me out to my office in a big boat. To have the water coming up around my ankles and seeing uh, things that I'd worked a lifetime to put together. At that time, our police department was located in that flooded area. We actually had to move out of there in about a two hour period and we had 13 feet of water. We decided that we're gonna put this place back together and make it better than ever. We found out it wasn't the final end, it was the people themselves, not their buildings and not their possessions. Poor Jack Leonard, who was my successor, uh, did a very good job. He, it was his leadership that put uh, that put the valley back together. We had the Mayor's Flood Recovery Task Force. The valley was ripe for a massive redevelopment. They recognized that that was the lifeblood for the community. That's where commercial, that's where a lot of that retail needed to go. THF Realty uh, saw an opportunity to create something down there which ultimately became the Chesterfield Commons. They also took a very, very important step. That was to declare the area blighted and to establish a TIF, a tax, a tax increment financing district. And as sales taxes were generated, those dollars were all used to finance the complete rebuilding and strengthening of the levee, uh, improvement of roadway systems, the construction of um, the uh, Boone's Crossing overpass. Lewis Sachs had a, a comprehensive plan. He had a master plan for the community. He had this probably an eight foot square 
scale model. He had a vision. He knew exactly how he wanted this town to develop, and it did. I think our investment in good talent shows it with the city hall. The subsequent very talented people that have run this city have made some very, very wise decisions. Before the internet was around and social media and everything else, if you wanted to communicate with large numbers of people on a civic issue, you either had to, you know, call them together, try to get yourself onto, you had to mail them a letter. We were able to create an architecture review board, which is really reflects some of the things that people see in the valley. The advancement here is just absolutely, it's just phenomenal. I think we've done a very good job of keeping the city uh, developed while at the same time having plenty of green space available. We have wonderful parks and recreation now. Uh, I think the amphitheater and the dog park are my two favorite places in Chesterfield. The city has been really good about planning, laying out a vision, and then just taking every opportunity. When something comes along, jumping on it, and that, that just furthers us down that road to accomplishing that vision. I think what most families find appealing to the city of Chesterfield is the fact that it is such a well-run city with, uh, I believe, an outstanding reputation. People feel like Chesterfield is their hometown. It's only been 25 years. It seems like a, like a nanosecond in many ways. And I don't see it a stopping. The last 25 have been remarkable, and I think we're poised for another great 25 years ahead of us. The opportunities are endless here in Chesterfield.